Over the coming weeks, I'm going to be taking you through, in some detail, this. The For Britain Manifesto for 2020. Now, given that we have just been subjected to yet another Islamic terror attack, where two people were murdered uh, a few days ago in London, I want to start by talking about a policy that makes this party unique, that shows who we are, our courage, our strength and our determination to defend British culture. And that issue is, of course, Islam. Now, others will talk about lack of police. They'll talk about sentencing and, and letting people out early. And these are all pertinent points, but they do not address the ideology behind these attacks. Both Labour and the Conservatives have turned Britain into a country where 23,000 known jihadis are walking our streets. More importantly, the borders are open and will stay open to the same countries that brought 23,000 jihadis to Britain. It's insanity and no one is discussing this in terms of immigration either. So immigration will be up next, but today I think it's pertinent for us to talk about Islam. Let me take you through, I'll read through the policy in our manifesto with a bit of extra commentary from myself. So, to start. Since the 1950s, migration from the Islamic world to the UK has grown and grown, and it currently shows no signs of abating. Now, why do we have 23,000 jihadis in the country? Because the borders have been opened to countries where jihad is fervent. And here's what's crucial. Even if we locked up every suspected terrorist for life, the borders are still open for more. Exactly how many are we supposed to imprison? Closing the borders is absolutely key to saving our society. It continues, while immigration per se, if too high, can produce immense challenges in any society, immigration from societies with opposing cultural and religious values can be irreparably damaging. And we are now seeing the result of that damage. The British government... British government after British government kept our borders open without in any way or at any time questioning the beliefs, the values, the morals, the religious uh, uh, tradition of the people coming here. Now, multiculturalism is one issue and perhaps it can work, but it depends on the cultures. If cultures can live successfully side by side, it will, as I say, depend on what the culture teaches uh, what its traditions are because there are different cultures in the world different parts of the world have different cultures and different parts of the world have different religions this is common sense so you must ask yourself whether or not a specific culture or a specific religion will be able to fit in seamlessly to British society this question was never asked for Britain understands that mass immigration from Muslim societies has introduced Islamic norms and values to Britain. And we understand that those values are, for the most part, incompatible with our own. Islamic cultural and religious values are very different to those of the Western world, or indeed many of the world's cultures. While Western democracy is built upon the concept of free speech and the right to criticise authority, including religious authority, Islam does not recognise this right. In fact, in several Islamic countries, criticism of Islam is punished with the death penalty, often using incredibly gruesome methods. Now, this is a matter of fact. Uh, it's not speculation. It's ob observable truth. The death penalty for apostasy or blasphemy, Pakistan, for example, Saudi Arabia, uh, and these are relevant, particularly with the case of Pakistan, uh, because most Muslims in this country originate from Pakistan. Uh, there is no freedom of speech there. There are no women's rights either, but I'll get on to that in a second. You cannot have seamless integration with millions of people who know a society that 
punishes people for free speech with the death penalty. You cannot have that. And we have seen the end result. We have seen the restrictions on free speech that are now emerging in the United Kingdom as a result of Muslim organisations demanding that their criticism of their religion be criminalised. And it will be. Unless we, we turn the tide, it will be outright criminalised. It's now part of this hate speech nonsense, but it will eventually be directly criminalised, especially, uh, or, well, faster under Labour. It'll happen under the Tories as well, but it'll happen faster under Labour. A second major incompatibility between Western society and Islamic society involves the status and treatment of women and girls. While in most of the world's societies, men and women enjoy equal rights, in Islamic societies, women and girls are treated as property. Child marriage, honour violence, domestic violence, rape and degradation of females are rife across the Islamic world and Sharia law permits many of these abuses. Criticism of this can amount to criticism of Islam and therefore blasphemy, thereby carrying the death penalty. Now, once again, this isn't controversial. The 19 of the 20 worst countries in the world for women are Islamic. We know that child marriage is rife. We know from senior clerics across the Muslim world that child marriage is permissible under Sharia law. We also know, and we know it not only from looking at Muslim countries, but from looking at Islam right here in the UK, that women are treated as less than subhuman. A woman is worth half of a man. Her word, her testimony is worth only half of a man's. She has no rights over her own children. This is disgraceful and it's happening in the UK under our noses with Sharia councils and tribunals and our politicians, weak politicians, cowardly politicians, look the other way. All the while pretending to be feminists, of course. Let's not forget that bit. Moving on. While For Britain recognises that individual Muslims are human beings who should be judged on their own merits like everyone else, we also recognise that mass immigration from the Muslim world brings Islam and Sharia along with it. Now, when you argue against Islam in any shape or form, the apologist will come back with, and I guarantee it every single time, the response of the apologist will be, not all Muslims. We know, I've been down this road so many times, we know that not every individual Muslim subscribes to this stuff, but we also know that vast numbers do, and that when you open your borders to the countries that practice Sharia, for example, you are bringing people who believe in Sharia to your country. You are bringing Sharia. Just because not all Muslims subscribe to it, doesn't mean it isn't a problem. It is, it's real, it's here, we've got to confront it. Not all, not good enough. Both free speech and the safety and freedom of women and girls have dramatically reduced, both in Britain and across the, across the West, as a result of the import of Islamic norms. Currently, Britain and the West are home to countless polygamous families, child marriages and other practices entirely incompatible with our laws. This is because Muslims often live according to the rules of Sharia and reject Western values. Thus, a parallel system has emerged with Muslims living under one law and everyone else under another. Once again, this shouldn't be controversial. We know that across Europe, child marriage is rife. We know this. And, and it's uh, uh, definitely, definitely much bigger, a much bigger problem than our politicians are willing to admit. The parallel system has emerged. It has, particularly in matters of family law and in some matters of criminal law. We know because they tell us that the Muslim Council of Britain, the Muslim Arbitration Tribunal, the, the Islamic Sharia Council all support Sharia councils in this country and they are practising it in a way that defies our cultural norms and values and indeed our laws. No Sharia council or tribunal should be dealing with domestic violence cases, for example, a criminal offence, but they are. They openly admit it. For Britain also recognises that female genital mutilation, FGM, 
is sanctioned in Islamic scripture and carried out almost exclusively by Muslims. That is certainly the case in the UK. And if anyone would like to argue that and produce statistics of the non-Muslims who commit FGM in this country, I would be very interested to hear them. FGM is sanctioned in Islamic scripture. Not all schools of Islam accept these teachings. These are in the Hadith. Not everyone accepts them, which is why not all Muslims practice FGM. But in those Muslim societies that do practice FGM, it is held up, continued, maintained by Muslim clerics quoting Hadith of Muhammad. That is a fact. That is the truth. Uh, and burying our heads in the sand is not going to change that. So here is our list, our policy list. For Britain will end the use of Sharia tribunals and alter arbitration and charity laws to outlaw these. Arbitration tribunals, Islamic Sharia Council, operate under charities laws or arbitration laws. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be allowed to be. It was not the intent of these laws. We will change those laws so that there can be no arbitration tribunals or councils delivering Sharia verdicts. Ensure that Islamic marriages are registered with the state in line with those of other religions. Now, this again shouldn't be controversial, but Islam is unique in that it, in the large percentage of its marriages that are not registered with the state, this is what allows polygamous marriages, Sharia marriages, to take place. And it keeps family law outside of British law. Some people in this country live from birth to death under Sharia. This is un acceptable. We must make sure that Islamic marriages are registered uh, and uh, just like everyone else and that Islamic marriages are governed by British law, not Sharia law. Ban the burqa as a security threat. Again, this should be uncontroversial. It is not about what we may wear. It's about concealing identity in public. People should not be able to conceal their identity in public in this manner. And we must have one law for all. If I can't wear a bike helmet or a uh, balaclava into a bank or a shop, then I shouldn't be able to wear a burqa either. This is a mark of Islamic supremacy where the rules don't apply to Muslims and they don't accept these rules. We must ban the burqa and the majority of British people agree. Ban madrasas and inspect and regulate Islamic schools. Now this sounds like we're, you know, we, you'll, you'll get the argument won't you? You're picking out Islam, what about everyone else? There is more than enough evidence and therefore more than enough reasons to inspect Islamic schools and closed madrasas. We have countless videos, documented uh, evidence of the teachings in some Islamic schools, which again incite violence, particularly against women or Jews or homosexuals. This should not be allowed. We must regulate, inquire and find out what is going on in Islamic schools, what they are teaching and if they are teaching things that breach the law, stop them from doing so. Investigate mosques and close those found guilty of inciting violence with non-British imams guilty of this to be deported. We do not need people here with no right to be here preaching hatred of our society. We don't need it. Yes, British citizens are entitled to free speech, but non-British citizens are not. We do not have to provide a platform for the world to spread their hatred of this country inside this country. If mosques are found to be preaching the killing of Jews or homosexuals or violence against women, shut them down. And if the imam isn't British, throw him out. Close all mosques found to be involved with child marriage. Now, one of the things you'll read about me is that I was, uh, I told an undercover reporter that many mosques need to be closed. The context, of course, was uh, obliterated and this was what the, the newspaper said. She wants to close mosques. What I was talking about was mosques marrying children. And we have seen a documentary, an undercover documentary from ITV, where imams were willing to marry underage girls. They should be closed down, the imam arrested or deported if they shouldn't be in this country. Deport non-British members of grooming gangs and apply heavy penalties of at least 20 years imprisonment for others. Once again, rapists should not be given the privilege of living 
in this country. Foreign rapists should not be given the privilege of living in this country. We have enough crime without importing it. Disallow people in polygamous or child marriages from living in the United Kingdom. Simple. We will not have child marriage or polygamous marriage in this country. We will not have it. If you insist upon it, you can go to a country that will have it. The UK will not be one of them. Ban halal and home slaughter of animals. Those found to be sacrificing animals at home during religious festivals should be arrested and non-British citizens deported. Once again, this is simple. We will not allow this in the United Kingdom. We have come out of the dark ages in the United Kingdom and we will not go back. We have had years of advancement in animal welfare and animal rights and we will not go back now to accommodate Islam. No halal and no slaughtering of animals in back gardens at Eid. This is disgraceful. We will bring it to an end. Support ex-Muslims and ensure that people are free to leave Islam without penalty. Those who threaten ex-Muslims should be prosecuted and deported if appropriate. Ex-Muslims live a terrible life in the United Kingdom. This is a scandal. It, Nisar Hussain, our Islam spokesman, was beaten almost to death for leaving Islam and had to leave his home under armed police guard. This is not acceptable and those who threaten ex-Muslims will be arrested, jailed or deported from this country. Ex-Muslims are key and crucial to our understanding of Islam both doctrinally and how it is practiced here in the United Kingdom. We have so much to learn from them and they need and deserve a voice on the public stage in this country for Britain will give them that voice. Change laws on FGM to remove the evidential burden from children. That is, children should not have to testify. Their mutilated genitals provide the required proof. And we must ensure that those convicted of FGM are severely punished with long-term imprisonment and or deportation. FGM is barbaric. It's the removal of a young girl's genitals and the, the assurance, it's to ensure that a woman can never enjoy sex. It's misogyny defined. Uh, and we have at the moment this weak response from politicians with children don't want to testify against their parents. We shouldn't be making children testify against their parents. We have FGM clinics all over this country dedicated to fixing the physical uh, problems uh, that FGM introduces. So why aren't the police going to these clinics? Why isn't Proof of medical or of, of, of genital mutilation enough to prove that if either the parents did this to the child or they allowed it to happen. Either way, it's a criminal offence and if they're not British, they should be thrown out of this country. We will not accept medieval misogynistic barbarism in the United Kingdom. We will put it, we will put a stop to it. We will throw out its practitioners. It's as simple as that prosecute and or deport those found guilty of threatening violence against critics of Islam. Now we know that crowds will amass in London holding up signs saying butcher those who insult Islam. How dare they? It's an incitement to murder, to violence. We must not allow this and those who are not from this country and who are not British citizens who are on our streets calling for the murder of critics of Islam should be removed from this country. Ensure that police and government facilitate freedom of speech and the right to criticise Islam. That means getting rid of all the hate speech mm -hmm. rubbish that has curtailed our rights. We will say what we like about Islam without any threat of arrest from the police. This is scandalous and our politicians, if they had any courage or any principle, would be standing up and saying this, that the right to criticise Islam is sacrosanct. It is our fundamental right in the United Kingdom. Clear, concise, consistent. That is what we need. Finally, 
hold a public inquiry into Islamic doctrine, including the Quran and Hadiths and the fundamentals of Sharia law and fully inform the British public as to its values. Now, the media will have you believe that Islam is just like, I don't know, Hinduism, Sikhism, any other minority religion in this country. It is not. It is a complete set of values. It is a complete way of life. It has a criminal arm, a military arm. It is entirely, entirely political. There is no secular separation between mosque and state. The Hadiths do teach the terrible things that happen across the Muslim world. The Quran does teach the complete subjugation of non-Muslims under Muslim rule all over the world. That is the reality. What we do about that reality is up to debate, but that is the reality and the British public needs to know that. No more lies, sanitisation by politicians or the press. We will tell the truth and then the British people will decide what to do about that truth. You are not going to hear a policy like this from any other political party. And what's even better is that we mean it. You know, other people may, be, may pay lip service to this. They'll make controversial statements every now and then, but they'll backtrack immediately and apologise a week later. The minute they're called a racist or Islamophobe, they crumble. But I'm already called those names and I really don't care. They don't faze me. I'm not going to change on this. I have never changed on this. I'm the only party leader in this country who has taken all the insults, all the punches and still continued to stand and tell the truth. If that's a party you want, if that's a leader you want, then get on board with For Britain. We are the only party who will tell the truth about Islam. Yeah.